Hello, and welcome back to ClearCast, the real estate fintech podcast. My name is Jeff Allen. I am joined, as always, by my friend and colleague, Keenan Chen. Keenan, how are you? Hello, Jeff. I am doing great. Why? Because I'm at home. Yeah, yeah, you've been on the road quite a bit. Yes, but I am firmly in California right now. Both of my feet are in California. It's great. <laughs> and that's going to last for all of what, five more days, something like that? You know, let's let's just enjoy the moment, Jeff. There's no reason yeah. to go right to the bad news. I'm just kidding. Good, good point. <laughs> Keenan is a road warrior, and we're happy for his family that he gets to be home for for at least a couple days. So enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. So this is episode twenty-seven, mm. um, which means that. Our podcast is now kind of getting a little older, like not 30 yet. So like, it's not like, it's not like it has back issues yet. That starts at 30, <laughs> but like definitely can't party as hard as it used to. Yeah. And it's still living in the basement of its parents. Oddly enough with incredible amounts of student debt. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> our, our, our podcast is, uh, I'm proud of it. It's grown up. It has. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've got a really fun show today. Later on, we've got Tim Nguyen coming in from Be Smarty, uh, which is going to be awesome. Uh, but first, let's talk a little bit about stats and news. I'm going to start with the stat of the pod. Keenzy, are you ready? I am ready. Okay. First, I'm going to say the first part of the stat, and it's going to sound super impressive. Mm. In the month of April, Personal income in the United States increased $89.3 billion. We're rich. That's it. Shut it down. We're done. <laughs> Until you realize that that is actually just 0.4% increase in income. Oh. So not, not that much. I was going to retire. <laughs> Me too. I was really excited. When I read the stat the first time, I actually started spending money like crazy. And then I read the next words and I stopped. Okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, that's from the Bureau of Economic Analysis. So a decent bump in personal income. Um, but um, the, the, the kind of the stat that's, um, that's really interesting here is that um, Disposable personal income increased 48.3 billion, so 0.3%. Personal consumption expenditures increased 0.9%, so significantly more. And <clears throat> what is contained in personal consumption expenses? Uh, it is lots of different things, including motor vehicles. I know you contribute to those expenditures. <laughs> Gearhead Keenan. Um, food, but most notably housing and utilities have fueled the big increase there. What do you think about that, Keenan? So are you saying that I spent more than I earned last month? I can't speak to your own personal situation. I'm referring <laughs> to the United States as an entity. Oh, oh okay. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, housing is driving, uh, you know, expenditures at a rate faster than income increase or wage increase. So yeah, that, that does seem to be the story. I mean, we're still seeing what, you know, double digit, you know, 20% type year over year home price appreciation. So that does make sense. Um, I, I was speaking with someone this week from Raleigh, North Carolina, and, you know, I think they bought a house two years ago and it's doubled in value in two years. So that is, uh, it, it's still insane. Yeah, and, and it's cool uh, if you own a house, like great, uh, it's going up in value. Um, but for those who are first time home buyers, renters too, let's not forget about them because rents are going up pretty significantly. Mm. None of that is good news. Um, it's not good news for uh, you know, consumption expenditures to be going up 0.9% and income to only be going up 04 Those are bad numbers. Yep. We'll have to uh, keep an eye on this for the summer, but 
But is anything uh, anything anything changing? Seeing anything in the news that would that would change this? Great transition, Keenan. We've got a news story to talk about. Uh, the purchase market is showing early signs of shifting a little bit back towards the buyer's favor. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you who have been paying attention to the housing market you know that the, what is driving housing prices to go up as aggressively as they are is that we're in the middle of a historic supply crunch. Um, there are simply very few houses available. Um, and that's been the case for probably the last two plus years. Uh, but um, recent article from Next Mortgage, uh, Mortgage News, uh, purchase market shifting to favor buyers. Uh, and it's actually pointing back to a Redfin report that uh, demand for homes is starting to taper off a bit um, with mortgage rates going up. And there's a lot more sellers coming to the market in recent weeks. So what does this all mean? Well, I, I, I've certainly seen, well, I've seen you know, a few different articles talking about the spike maybe in listings that are suddenly showing up on the market. Um, and I was just taking a look at our data um, over, over the past few weeks and Lo and behold, I do see this this spike. Uh, we, we get you know almost kind of taking a look at it every every three days or so, taking a look at what's on the market, and um, it's actually ruined my talk track because I had a, I had a nice talk track going over the past you know couple of weeks that there's only three hundred and twenty five thousand listings nationally on the market right now, only three hundred thousand. So we've got over three hundred million you know people in our our U.S. population. And there's only 300,000 listings, um, but it just jumped this week from 325 to 376,000 listings. So 50,000 new listings just showed up here um, in le in less than two weeks. So that's a very notable spike. Um, to put it into some context, though, that spike finally got us back to what was on the market last year at this time. So it's not like this is some huge, you know, jump of supply over where we've been over the past year. Uh, we were just so constrained that now we're getting back to where we were uh, in May of last year. And then as I went back another, another year, back to 2020, we're still only 60% of what we had on the market in 2020. So we're still 40% below you know, what we had two years ago. So it's good news that it's turning and listings are showing up, but you just have to put it in that context um, historically to see that we're, we're still in a constrained, uh, constrained market from a supply standpoint. Yep, good point. We need to keep this all in perspective. So it certainly is a good sign for pricing and affordability that things are softening a bit, but we have a long way to go to get back to where we were. Um, and I like the way you put it. Uh, there's 300 plus million people in the United States, and there are 300 plus thousand um, houses available for sale. So really, we need to fit 1,000 people at every one of those houses. <laughs> <laughs> and that is why home improvement is going through the roof. <laughs> you got to add on square footage if you're going to fit 1,000 people in every house. <laughs> We've solved the conundrum. I'm sure that every single Home Depot exec just logged onto our podcast just now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are joined now by our guest of the pod. Uh, we've got Tim Nguyen with us. Tim is the co-founder and CEO of Be Smarty. Uh, Be Smarty is a leader in digital mortgage innovation. Uh, using a combination of big data and automation, BeSmarty allows borrowers to go from application to approval to disclosures and fulfillment in about 15 minutes. That's fast. Tim, welcome to the show. Welcome. Or uh, thanks for having me. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, uh, Keenan and Jancy. Appreciate it. <laughs> we, we knew Tim was going to try to turn the tables on us. Like, pretty soon it's going to be like, <laughs> <laughs> and Keenan and Jeff are now on the BeSmarty podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> 
Awesome. Well, let, let's start by uh, rooting our listeners in what Be Smarty is. Can you tell us just a little bit about Be Smarty? What's unique about you and who are the customers that you serve? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So, you know, what makes Be Smarty unique is our focus on delivering easier, faster, more transparent consumer experience for both consumers and lenders and investors at the end of it all. Um, what that really means for us is we're striving to get to a seven day mortgage close consistently across 60% of our clients' volume. Today, what really makes us unique is we're able to get through the first three days. Application, through um, credit, through product and pricing, through fees, through initial disclosures, through appraisal fulfillment, um, and ordering in about 15 to 20 minutes. So that's, you know, when, you, when we look at it that way, right, we got the first three days covered. Now we're starting to tackle days four, five, six, and seven. At the end of it all, right, you know, we look at this as, okay, if we can automate as much of the data and processes for your consumers, you as a loan officer, as much as possible, um, that makes you more efficient. And then the question becomes, right, what do you do with that efficiency? And we've asked this question before in other webinars, and, you know, we got answers from, well, I'd like to spend more time with my kids, I'd like to exercise more, I like to uh, get back to my hobbies, or I like to go out prospect, make more, make more money. You know, and underlying all this, right, is if you get this time back, Right. You get to it changes the way you serve consumers. You're no longer spending a significant portion of your time going to the county website, going to the title website and hunting down data and doing things manually. Right. You get to focus that time and attention, time and attention on relationships, being what I call a trusted advisor. Buying a home is no small feat for especially for a first time consumer. Right. And they have a lot of questions. You need to build rapport. It's. You know, we want loan officers to use that time to build that report, to provide trusted advice. What product should you get yourself into? What does the horizon look like for you? Let the busy work be done by computers. Hmm. Seven, so seven day close, that sounds super ambitious. And, and I imagine those, those days four, you know, four, five, six, seven, isn't that where all the kind of gnarly stuff is like appraisal, title, the things that have been the, the, the long pole in the tent. So when you think about you guys being, you know, this consumer facing uh, I I experience, um, how how do you see yourself, I guess, in, in solving that whole life cycle to get down to a seven day close? Yeah, well, first off, I think it takes um, a goal to be set. Mm -hmm. I think it's important we get the word out, right? That it's possible to get to a seven day goal. When we said in 2016, we're going live with a product to get you the first three days covered in about 15, 20 minutes, people didn't believe us until they saw it, right? People, even after they saw it, they didn't believe it until they actually got to use it. And that's what, you know, your competitors, right? Our clients are using uh, to win over the marketplace, to add efficiencies. So when we look at this, one of our best customers was consistently over the refi boom, right? Over the last two years during the pandemic, consistently closed their loans in nine to 10 days. And while they had major streamlines, you know, they, they were be smart customer, they used another LS, right? They had other systems, but we're able to piece that together and the, he was all in. But here's the important thing. He was all in on this vision, not when things got busy. We were working with him a year before things got busy, when the markets were normal. And I think that's a really important thing to talk about, right? Is when do you innovate? Right. When things are busy, you don't have time to because you got to cater that top of the fund and close loans. And when things are slow, you don't have the budget for it. So when do you do it? Right. Um, so I encourage your you know, clients and lenders to really think about innovating now. Right. It's still two point five trillion dollar market. There's still seven million loans. Yes, it's been a rocky Q1. It's a rocky Q2, but there's still a mortgage place uh, competition. Right. It's going to get a little bit weaker. Um, people are going, going to go out of business. Uh, m and activity is really heating up in the mortgage space again. We're starting to see that. Um, so the second thing, right, is great partners. One of the reasons why we hooked up with Clear Capital, you know, utilizing your tools to streamline that mortgage or that appraisal process is one component that we're super excited doing with y'all. There's VOIE, there's, you know, pre-closing, pre-underwriting activities, right? All this data that starts from the very beginning, will eventually flow down 
you know, through the entire funnel. But we can't do it without great partners because we're certainly not experts in everything. We're relying on people like yourself, your company to fill these voids. You know, our secret is how do we piece that together to accomplish a bigger goal? And that's what we do well here. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously Be Smarty is, you know, a company that you co-founded and you're, you know, you're the, the CEO. Um, so it's, it's near and dear to your heart. Let's talk a little bit about your personal journey to reaching that. Um, what's your career been like and how did you kind of make this decision that Be Smarty and this mission was what you wanted to work on? Um, yeah, it's a great story um, or a great question as well. So, you know, I, I think when you look at Tim's journey through Be Smarty, it was a journey of never giving up. So back in the days, I used to own a nationwide appraisal management company, title, escrow, notary, we did all that back end stuff. And we eventually ended up focusing on appraisals when HVCC came around. And we built that business pretty well, eventually exited in 2014. And the one of the main reasons why we, I exited is I wanted to tackle something that was much larger than what I've been doing, right? Appraisals are super complex. There's a lot of problems to solve, but I just want to take it upon myself to really, you know, uh, disintermediate the bigger mortgage pie, right? When you think of what eBay did with, you know, auctions, right? When you think about what, um, E-Trade did with stocks, what Expedia did with, with um, airline tickets. I want to do the same thing here. I want technology to handle the easy brainless stuff and really let the experts focus in on problem solving, right? Being trust, trusted advisors. But, you know, we, we simply just never gave up. We started in 2007, right during the time the new century went under, if you guys remember that. The world was tum tumbling down, 80% drop in the market, like literally overnight. It was nothing what we're compared to right now, right? So if you haven't been through that journey before, this is nothing compared to what we went through back then. But we survived. We got out of it even stronger. Um, what I'll say is, you know, we just simply heard a lot of bad stories from borrowers. If you guys, you know, back then, the only two people borrowers ever met were the appraiser and the notary agent. That was it. They, could, they never really met their loan officers and their title agents and all these other people, maybe the realtor, of course. Um, so they would call us. Hey, I can't find my lender anymore. I can't find my broker anymore. I'm going to lose my home of, you know, 10, 15 years. I took out too much money. What is a negative mortgage? What the heck did I get myself into? It got me curious. And the more curious we got about the origination process, the more we realized, gosh, it could just be a better way. Not just for the consumers, but also for the lenders as well. Yeah. How you know, as you think about the way you're approaching it, I mean, how do you, um, I guess, how do you differentiate, you know, your approach maybe versus some of your, your peers? Because there's been, you know, ever since Rocket Mortgage made their big announcement, you know, the, the original Super Bowl ad, I mean, it's been incredible how much focus has been put on the front end. But it sounds like you're talking about it a little bit different. You're not just talking about only the consumer experience in terms of uh, that initial, you know, loan app. You know, step, but but a more holistic um, yeah solution. So we differ, right? We we look at the market a little bit differently than our competitors in the following ways. You know, first off, we said we we were mortgage people, right? Is where I would start. We understand the value of getting a consumer to the point where they're willing and able to pay and legally able to pay for an appraisal. Okay. Um, once you get a consumer to commit their data and their money to a process with you as a lender, you have a much better shot of winning that you know, consumer over and closing that loan. So getting to that paid appraisal was our first milestone. So I think we just picked the right goal, right? We weren't in it to just have a fancy 1003. We weren't in it to just, you know, have a, um, you know, reduce and save on a couple of hours of work. We want to save days of work. We want to save a tremendous amount of labor. So that's the first goal, I think, is the first way we approached it. Now that we've, you know, met that goal in 2016, it's about scaling it out, about making it work with different LSs, different systems, different vendors, different players, right, different products. Um, that's been our journey since 2016 when we went live with the product. And now that that's starting to stabilize, right, and this is could work with not just one LS, but multiple LSs. Now we're looking towards, you know, days four, five, six, and seven. So for us, we're going to say laser focus on mortgages. That's what we do as born mortgages. You know, 
I had warned every new employee here when they join Be Smarty, especially if they haven't been in mortgages before. Once you go mortgage, you're probably not going to go out. So make that decision wisely, right? Um, I tried leaving the industry a few times. It just didn't work out. Um, but anyways, so that's how we, we simply look at it. You know, we, we stay dedicated and focused on mortgage. And the goal here is how do we get to a seven-day close, right? And which begs the question, do we need a seven-day close? You don't always need a seven-day close, right? Sometimes a purchase will just take longer. Someone needs, needs to move out of the house, et cetera, et cetera. It does, it's not the fact that you need a seven-day close all the time, but it's in a much better position, much less stressful position to wait for a close than to rush at the last minute to close something, mm -hmm. right? So it's the ability to just streamline everything, automate as much as possible without taking away from the power um, that the loan officer provides in this transaction, right? I want to be very clear about that. Loan officers are absolutely needed, but I think the capacity is going to be different, right? Again, more trusted advisor, relationship, rapport, expertise, helping them navigate the markets, troubleshoot, you know, the property troubleshoot, the HOA, right? Those are the things where we need the loan officers involved to help close that deal and deliver on what the consumer really needs. So I like the way you put it about, do we need a seven day close? We've encountered that ourselves in other industry conversations about um, how we're speeding up the appraisal process. You know, um, <clears throat> you know, for instance, on the purchase side, we've heard, well, it's great if you get the appraisal done a little bit faster, but I can't close any faster um, because, you know, I've got a buyer and a seller who need to pack up and move all their earthly belongings, you know, um, and that's all true. But but the counter argument that you just made is perfect. And I think it aligns to, aligns to the way we think about it too. It's like, you don't need to close in seven days, but man, it would be nice to know that you can and to know that you're gonna get rid of um, all that uncertainty and friction that arises when you are waiting for the closing, you are waiting for the appraisal. Everybody hates that and everybody hates that experience. That's really what you're working on is changing that experience. Exactly. You know, I think I was on a panel with Keenan, uh, gosh, what, two, three weeks ago, Keenan? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we talked about this exact same thing, right, is you don't need the seven-day close, but gosh, why stress out over that last mile? Mm -hmm. Let's have all the ducks lined up. Let's wait for closing. Let's be in a comfortable position, right? And when the thing that came out from that, uh, that, that session was, you know, as a reminder, right, to all originators, I was an originator way back when, is no one really wants a mortgage. Nobody in their right mind wants a mortgage, okay? And we're not delivering on a mortgage. We're delivering on a much bigger outcome, right? We're delivering on the dream of home ownership, raising kids, a place to hang your hat at the end of the day, right? We're delivering on security. We're delivering on the American dream. Right. That's where our focus needs to be. And the easier we can make that happen, the more seamless we can do it, the better that journey. Right. I mean, you think about all the little things we do today. If you can push a button and order flowers. And, you know, it's going to get there on Friday because that's when your wife's anniversary is right or with your wife. I just dealt with that recently. So I had a, it's top of mind. I don't have to worry about rushing out to Rouse or the flower store Conroy's at the last minute and canceling me so I can make this happen and keep, you know, the, the family happy, mm -hmm. uh, the relationship happy, right? I can just push them on and be done. My stress is gone. I can move on to something else I'm more concerned about. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, you know, at this time right now where, yeah, there's, there's a little bit more time, like you said, to focus on innovation, to think about things like this and actually um, prioritize them differently. You know, what's maybe give us a sense of like where you guys are headed this year, innovation wise. I know mean, you just announced some recent, you know, partnerships with with Fiserv and and others. So you know, what give us a little bit of a sneak peek. You know, looking forward to to this yeah. year. Yeah. First off, we're super excited with the Fiserv announcement. Um, reason why is now we get to deliver the Be Smart Division and product right to a whole new group of lenders that frankly, we're not, we weren't going to be able to deliver to without, without the Pfizer support. So that partnership is amazing for us. Um, that will fulfill our scale of what we already have mission, right? Just to take what we have and make it work in more systems and more players and spread that, uh, that, that ability out so people can benefit from it. Now, the rest of our year and probably into 2023 as well, we're focusing 
um, refocusing, I should say, on operational efficiencies, right? Um, we're not in the top of the game, top of the funnel game anymore, right? And I think we all know that. Um, it doesn't mean we ignore the top of the funnel. We're still doing things there like our mortgage marketplace and a few other, de uh, with, and uh, a pre-qualification where you get your borrowers pre-qualified 24 seven, right? Within minutes. We're still working on those things, but our focus has shifted to operational effectiveness, right? We're in the predictable, well, somewhat predictable market in terms of annual volume, right? It's still going to be rocking between here and there. What we're, we're looking for market rates to stabilize, not continually rise. That'll be easier to manage as well. Lenders in Q2, there's, you know, they're, they're uh, streamlining their operations, headcount reduction essentially is what's going on, right? Um, so once we get through that, the people are going to start thinking about, okay, we got the business we have. How do I close that more effectively? So to that end, I'm actually looking at some uh, on my whiteboard here. So the we got an HOI integration right that just that just went live to help reduce you know to help increase operational efficiencies the VOIE the ability to verify income employment um, from an instantaneous solution down to a credential solution that's being built in we're looking at integrations with a company for example called Candor that many of, many of us know to help with the underwriting efficiency excuse me something flying around my <laughs> um, so we're looking at at, at those. Um, we're looking at additional data and analytics on our dashboard, right? Things that make people make better decisions, operate more effectively. Right? So that's the roadmap for us in for the second half roadmap for 2022. And of course, you know, I, I would be uh, remiss if I didn't mention we just finished an integration with SnapDocs. So now our clients are starting to roll out SnapDocs for the whole eClo solution. Uh, so the work never stops. Software never dies, and we'll keep on rolling. The work never stops, that's for sure. Um, and and to kind of turn it back to that BHAG, um, you're, you're talked about, we talked about how we all agree the seven-day close, um, even if it isn't quote-unquote necessary, um, is something that we all want to need, right? So let's, let's close it out with talking about, is it possible? Um, BHAGs are really supposed to be ambitious they're supposed to be really hard to reach what's your gut say do you think you can get to seven days and what are kind of the, the final long steps that it'll take to get there oh absolutely i'm 100 confidence we'll get to seven days the question is can we get there consistently through 60 percent of our volume across our you know eight or so mortgage customers um and i think the answer is yes it's going to be a challenge for sure the first is actually just you know proving it out on you know happy path files. Then we're gonna go and troubleshoot the more complicated self-employed income and you know, people with multiple REOs and you know, uh, you know, more complicated scenarios. So is it possible? Absolutely it is. Can we scale out to 60% quickly? I don't know. Um, you know. The jury's out for that. We'll, we'll take the first step first and we'll see what happens on the next step. But is it possible? Absolutely it is, right? Days four, five, six, seven. It's gonna take lenders um, some lenders, you're going to have to switch vendors, right? You might need to move over to Clear Capital if to take advantage of the modern appraisals and the hybrid appraisals. Not maybe, um, definitely. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, lenders are going to have to make some hard decisions, right? And we're not trying to get in the way in the middle of long-term relationships. What we're saying is, if this outcome is worth it, you may have to make some changes to the way you, you do business. But if you can get this outcome, how does it change your business, right? How does it elevate your business? The cost of carry, right, uh, on warehouse lines and and um, the certainty in closing, making sure your originators get paid at the end of the month, so they're making their bonuses and they're, they're, they're tiering, right? These are all things that matters. Helps you retain good talent, helps you deliver service, and helps you be predictable, mm. right? I think the predictability part of it is, 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 is important because if you can, if you knew 60% of your portfolio could close in seven days, but follow certain process and using certain vendors and tools, you don't need to go advertise seven days. Maybe you advertise 11 days or 12 days or 10 days, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if you can give the market, the consumers and the realtors predictability and confidence, that's a game changer, mm -hmm. right? No, I, there's not many realtors where they'll say, yes, I think this lender I've been working with for 10 years is going to close that loan exactly on that day. Mm -hmm. right? how, many, how many people are going to say, yes, with confidence that's going to happen, right? But this will give confidence back to the marketplace. Yeah, that's that. 
that's huge. I mean, you know, the most it's the most stressful purchase people go through anyway, but like, why do we need to make it even more stressful? Uh, you know, why can't we we remove that friction for something that's, you know, that's an enormous purchase and and even especially right now, you know, where there's so much stress that's happened even before the loan part. I mean, just competing, you know, to even uh, you know, get your offer accepted on a home has been a difficult thing you know, over the past couple of years here. So appreciate what you're doing. Um, super excited to see the BHAG come true. And, um, and, and then I'm going to send you an electric fly swatter because <laughs> I love that because then you can like kill it and uh and it makes a nice shocking noise which is there, there's a couple moments i you saw me i had to go like this it was like literally <laughs> yeah, in my ear it's like you're under attack over there <laughs> it's all right we'll, we'll send some help but thanks for being on on the on the pod appreciate it tim and uh good luck uh, uh for the rest of the year thanks guys have a good day have a good week mm-hmm.